prove any finite subset of a metric space is compact. Okay, so let K be a finite subset of some metric space E of some metric space E. We show, so if you want to show that K is compact, then we show that if, if we have some open cover of K, so, so what we mean by that is if we have w some open cover, so some collection of open sets, so this is a set of open sets, each of these sets are, are indexed by alpha, where alpha is in some indexing set I, and I've talked about indexing sets in a previous video, alpha is in some set, indexing set I, such that K is contained in the union of all of these G alphas, all of these G alphas. So that's what it means for this collection to be an open cover of K, the collection of open sets to be an open cover of K. So we wish to show that there exists some finite subcollection. There exists some finite subcollection of this collection of open sets. There exists some finite subcollection of G, these G alphas. There exists some finite subcollection of these G alphas. So maybe if if if, we, if there exists some finite subcollection, then that that implies that there exists a finite set, there exists a finite, finite set of indices, finite set of indices, indices that we can we can denote alpha i, excuse me, alpha, alpha one, comma alpha two, all the way to alpha for some m. And all these alpha i's, these are all in our indexing set i. There exists some finite set of indices such that k, k is contained in the union of the sets indexed, the, the, the sets indexed by these finite set of indices. So the open sets in this sub, in this collection of open sets indexed by these finite set of indices. So we can say from i equals 1 to m, i equals 1 to m, the union of the, all of those g alpha i's. Okay. Okay, so if k is finite, if k is finite, this implies, this implies that k, k has n elements for some number n, for some n in the positive integers. And this is just a shorthand for positive integers, this bolded z with the, with the plus below it. So k has n elements for some n in the positive integers. And if k has n elements, then consider the following case. Consider the following scenario, where each of those elements, I'll just call them xi, so excuse me, x, x1, x2, all the way up to xn, and each of these elements is in a separate set g alpha within our collection of open sets of g alphas. So this is maybe g alpha i, g alpha j, and this is maybe g alpha n. And so to be clear, this, this xi might be in there, this x2 might be in here, and this xn is in here, and no two elements of k are in the same g alpha. Well, in this case, in this case, we must have that there must be n g alphas to contain the union of these n g alphas contains all of k. The union of all these n g alphas contains all elements of k. So all of these g alphas contain all elements of k. And in any other case, in any other scenario, we have a situation where there exists more than one x in k in the same g alpha. Let me say that again. If this is not the case, if it is not the case such that each xi in k is in its own g alpha and no two x's in k's are in the same g alpha, then it must be if that's if that is not the case, then it must be that there are at least that that there are more than one x 
and the same G alpha. So in all other cases, we'll need less than G, uh, less than N sets, less than N sets to cover all of K. Thus, we can say the following, that the union, the union from I equals one to some K for K is less than N, less than or equal to N, of all of these G alpha I's contains K in any scenario. And therefore we found, we found an, a subcollection and namely a finite subcollection in any case where K is finite that must contain K. Said differently, a finite number of elements can only occupy a finite number of containers. And therefore the, the containers, AKA my sets G alpha, they can only be, the, the, this finite number of elements can only occupy a finite number of these open sets and no more. Therefore, we have just shown that there, for any, for any collection, for any collection of open sets, that is a open cover for K, our finite set K. There, there must exist some finite subcollection of this, of those, of that open cover, such that that finite subcollection is a finite subcover for K. That is to say, it, it is a finite union, or excuse me, a union of a finite number of these open sets in this in this collection of open sets contains K. Okay.